Hi, I'm Trixie Appiato, a student at Georgetown's um, Walsh um, School of Foreign Service. I was born and raised in the Philippines, and as a tropical island girl, I spent my childhood swimming in the warm um, Philippine beaches. So with me today is a fellow tropical island girl, Miss Anna Oposa. Um, Anna is a writer, public speaker, um, paddy, um, rescue diver, and an ambassador of the sea. Um, her love for the ocean started when she was a child and continued to show in her environmental advocacy um, throughout college in the University of the Philippines and beyond. Um, in 2011, when news of the large-scale um, extraction of marine life in the country emerged, Anna decided to do something about it. So she co-founded um, Save Philippine Seas, um, a nonprofit um, independent movement that aims to protect the country's rich but threatened marine resources. Um, Safe Philippine Seas harnesses the power of social media to enforce environmental laws and organize community-based projects. Anna is also one of the global shapers to the World Economic Forum and the first Filipino and the youngest awardee um, of the Future for Nature Award um, in the Netherlands. As the official chief mermaid <laughs> of uh, Save Philippine Seas, she has made it her mission to preserve the natural beauty that the Philippines has to offer the world. Yes. So, Anna, thank you for joining me. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Yes, <laughs> yes I had to make sure that, you know, like the mermaid time is there. <laughs> it's there, That's yeah. The non negotiable. Part, yes. <laughs> but I wanted to start out by asking how you came to care about the ocean. And were there any experiences you had while you were young that gave you the sense of wonder um, and admiration for and the sea? So basically, how did you fall in love with the ocean? Well, first of all, growing up in the Philippines, you know, you're surrounded by water. Um, we're an archipelago of 7,107 islands. And I grew up with a dad who's an environmental lawyer. So it became part of our childhood to just go out, you know, do reforestation projects, join coastal cleanups, and be scuba divers. Um, but I never really thought of it as a career because, you know, when I was young, I wanted to be a celebrity. I wanted to be the next Broadway star. <laughs> um, but when I was 18, I had to go on an underwater cleanup. And I was in a class in UP and the professor said, either you join the cleanup or you take the final exam. So I said, well, of course I'm going to do the exam. I'm going to do the <laughs> underwater cleanup, sorry. Um, so I went, I, I went scuba diving. And you know, scuba diving when you're scuba diving for fun compared to scuba diving to pick up trash, it's completely different experiences. Because your consciousness changes, your awareness changes. So I went underwater and picked up diapers and, and sachets and all of these like things that I would have never imagined seeing underwater. And I, after that, I told myself, you know, I need to do something more. Um, and that's when I made the transition from musical theater to environmental advocacy. Oh. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the Philippines in particular. The, uh, yeah, I guess the country is located within the Coral Triangle, yes. so it has um, one of the best, um, bi you know, greatest biodiversity in the world. Yeah. So what makes the water around the Philippines so abundant, and what's so special about the location in the Philippine Seas? Well, the Philippines is located, as you said, in the Coral Triangle, and studies every year have shown that it is in the richest marine life in the entire world. So we have more than 400 species of corals. We have five out of the seven species of marine turtles. And every year, there are scientists who come and keep discovering like 200 new species. That's amazing. And, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and, but having said that, though, I think we are also, if the center of marine biodiversity, we also happen to be the center of adversity. And we've kind of assumed that the sea will give us unlimited resources, which obviously we're seeing that it can't. I guess um, part of the adversity that you were uh, speaking at. My next question is, um, since the Philippines sits um, in one of the warmest areas of the Pacific Ocean, um, because of this, it's one of the countries most vulnerable to climate yes. change. Yeah. And the coral reefs um, in the mangrove systems are some of the best natural yeah. barrier to super typhoons and yes. other disasters. Yet the past decades have seen to the depletion of these resources. Yeah. Um, so recently, we, had, we have experienced stronger and more frequent um, typhoons. Absolutely. So how have you seen it affect the lives of um, ordinary Filipinos? Well, uh, after Typhoon Sendong and after Typhoon Haiyan or Typhoon Yolanda, I had to do, I was part of relief and rescue operations, and we don't think about 
how typhoons affect the sea because it's underwater, you don't really see what's happening. But it's so easy to see how humans are affected in terms of their houses, their, their food, their water supply. And after both storms, I did dives and I saw how, how terrible the reefs looked under. You know, there was a beautiful reef in Dawin and it, it's a marine protected area. And when I went there after Typhoon Sendong, it just looked like a bunch of leaves that were piled up after, you know, after the fall foliage. Um, and I was just, we don't think about how winds and how storm surges will affect it. And of course, mangroves are also a big um, supposedly barrier, but they can also be affected by, by typhoons. And there's just been a lot of effort also to, to replant mangroves um, and to protect areas that have been damaged by the storm. Yeah, how about the livelihoods of the people around, um, I guess? Yeah, so ocean? a lot of fishing boats after typhoons, um, there was even, I even saw one typhoon uh, after Haiyan, there was a, a, a boat, a fishing boat, we call it Bangka. It was on a tree. Wow. So you can just imagine how crazy the winds were uh, during typhoon Haiyan. So Flying boats everywhere. Yeah, um, so you know, after a typhoon, you don't only destroy um, the tools that make you uh, a fisherman, but you also have to stop working for a while because you have to rebuild your house. You have to find out where you're going to get food. Um, so it's there's a lot of work on providing like temporary relief to them, like making them work, do do things in the island, like pick up trash or segregate trash. Um, and then the long term one, of course, is like helping them buy new boats and, and fishing gear. Yeah. Like I said, so um, today in the summit, um, both in the State Department and here at Georgetown University, we heard about the importance of collaboration between governments, NGOs, civil society, and businesses to save the environment. Um, why is it important to build coalitions to affect change? And what challenges have you faced um, forging partnerships to save the Philippine seas? And who are your partners now? You know. Protecting the ocean is an interdisciplinary problem, so the, in, the solutions also have to be interdisciplinary. Um, we work with academic institutions. Um, right now, we have a few people from Siliman University in Dumaguete. We work with fellow nonprofits like the Marine Wildlife Watch of the Philippines, Greenpeace, um, and we work a lot with young people. It's, it's, I'm especially passionate about working with, with young Filipinos all over the Philippines. and. Corporations, like we worked with Globe, we've worked with um, Swim, Anemone. Um, those are just the, the names at the top of my head, but it's really because sometimes all you have to do is ask. There are so many people who are willing to help, and sometimes all you have to do is send them an email or really you know, be brave and just ask, and they will actually give. They can. Oh, that's um, it's admirable. You're doing a lot of um, work with um, the youth. I guess with that one, for us millennials, it's easy to just look at an injustice in the world and be angry about it. And, yeah. like, and so what would you um, suggest that we, uh, yeah, we should do to you know, stop just being angry <laughs> and uh, maybe do something? So my first advice is always, and my real advocacy is really to stop global whining. It's not global warming, but to stop global whining and just stop complaining and think about solutions. Ask yourself what you can do about it and what the rest of the world is doing. And then next is one simple lifestyle change which is to reduce your plastic consumption. Stop using straws, bring a reusable water bottle, bring a reusable bag, and then you know that you're part of the solution. Yeah, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you, thank you, Jake Show. Yes. Uh, this is Anna um, Oposa, and she's a chief mermaid, so, uh, yeah, saving the Philippine Seas.